Welcome everyone to the featured segment and this uh, segment is going to be a little bit different. Ken and I are going to do a little bit of a role play because, uh, you know, upgrades are on, on everybody's mind lately. A lot of people want to upgrade. You know, people see the, the old version of NAV and they see that it's upgraded to the new version of Business Central. It looks completely different. So I'm going to be, I don't know, Michael, I guess, <laughs> sure. working at Oscar Brewery company where we manufacture beer cans and Ken's going to be the uh, the Microsoft partner who answers a bunch of my questions. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, Ken, how's it going? My name is Michael. I've been with uh, Oscar Brewing Company, manufacturing company for about a year. We manufacturing, we manufacture cans and a bunch of different little things that go ahead with, uh, that, that coincide with, with beer. Yeah. Um, I'm the controller. Mm-hmm. And you know what? We we're on Nav 2015. I like it. Where I came from before the shop, we're using Nav, you know, 2009 classic client. So this is a big difference for me. But I, you know, I go online, and and I see emails, and I see that there's this new version of Nav called Business Central, and I look at it, and it, it it's completely different. Is this something that maybe we should upgrade to? Or is this something we don't have to worry about? Are there are there features to upgrading this? Are there benefits? I mean, I see that it's in the cloud. It could be hosted on premise. There's so many questions. I'm losing the four hairs that I have left on my head. I don't know what to do here. What to recommend to my to yeah. my to my management team? Well, Michael, let's let's talk about it. Right. So so you're running Nav 2015. I yep. got some customizations in there. Yeah, we've got some customizations. Yep. Okay. You run in some add-on solutions. You got yep. a couple add-ons got some add-on in there. solutions, Avalara, a couple different things. All right. Yep. So, um, yep. So, so you're not alone. It's good there's, to hear. There's thousands of companies like you out there running Nav 2009, 2013, 15, 16, 17, 18. Right. And there's, but you look out there. There's, there's no Nav 2021. Right. There's no NAV 2022. What gives? Well, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central is NAV 2021, 2022. Right? So are you saying that it just got a name change or that it's... A, yeah, a it rebranding, rebranding. Okay, a rebranding of the product, right? Microsoft's, Microsoft said we're going to switch from Dynamics NAV, right, to just Dynamics... Uh, 365. Gotcha. Right? And, and Business Central is basically NAV. Okay. So, um, so that it is the product. Now, and if you've been, if you're active on the Microsoft Enhancement Plan. Which we are. Right. Great to hear. So you are entitled to run the latest version of Business Central at your organization. Okay. So you so version seventeen or twenty twenty wave two gotcha. is the latest release of Business Central. Okay. All right. Now one of the things that's a little confusing is that there's two flavors of this. There's business central on premise, mm-hmm. which you're running an on premise. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then there's also business central online. Online? Okay. Right? And, and and the difference is who's hosting or de- where is that who's hosting that solution or where is it deployed? In the on premise solution, you are responsible for hosting it. Right. I believe right, right now we're running it off our server, in house yeah. server, so yeah. Right. So so you could continue to run it on your in house server or you could decide I don't want to purchase another server, I wanna run it on a hosted server, like on Azure. So you could run it on a private Azure server that's for your organization only, and it's linked to your network. Now, I, I've been reading a lot about Azure. Now, cor- correct me if I'm wrong. Is Azure basically Microsoft's, what they're calling Microsoft's cloud? Is that what, is that what Azure? Okay, okay, yep. so I got you. Yep, so Azure is, is just simply a, the word that the name, the brand that they've given to Microsoft's cloud. Okay. okay. So in, in, the on, in that environment, if you're running Business Central on-premise, you're paying a monthly fee to run, to, to run that server on Azure. 
right? Okay. Um, or, or you could just buy a new server and run it on premise. Okay. Your other option, though, is to upgrade to Business Central Online. Okay. And how we would do that is we would take your current environment and we would run you through the upgrade process to Business Central on premise and then migrate that solution to Business Central Online. Okay. So now this is, and, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but I, you know, I, I'm a normal guy. I'm trying to, I've been reading a whole bunch of different things on Microsoft blog posts and, and whatnot. I know this company, Solution Systems, has a great blog. Um, now, it, when you say go online, is that, am I hosting, am I doing Microsoft Business Central uh, on-premise in Azure, or is it Microsoft Cloud, completely cloud on Microsoft's cloud, I guess? Right, right. <laughs> a little bit of overuse of the word, of the word cloud. A couple times, yeah. <laughs> is, is, is what happens, right? So people, what, when you say cloud, what do you mean? Well, and this is one of the key sticking points, is, is a lot of times, so when we say for Business Central, there's two, there's Business Central on-premise, which you can deploy on the cloud, on Microsoft's server. But in that environment, it's your private environment. So that's, so the way to think of it is in, in Microsoft, Business Central on-premise is like your, it's like your own house. Okay. You can choose to put your house physically on, on your, in your, in your office mm -hmm. or put your house on the Microsoft Cloud on Azure, gotcha. but you still have full control over when the grass gets cut and when yeah. the paint house gets painted, okay. right? And, are, and how the plumbing is laid out, right? How the pipes, yeah. how the pipes are connected. When you go to Business Central online, it's like you're moving into a condo building. Oh. And you have one of those units and within that unit, that's your unit, right? That's your business central mm -hmm. unit. You can you have control of your own data and some of your own customizations. But Microsoft is running the whole environment. That's your plumbing, your electricity, nice. the built the outside of the building and the grounds. Okay. They're taking <laughs> care of that for you. So pretty nice. Right, it, it, there's a huge benefit to that. The, you don't have so, to you don't have to worry about any of that. So when we do either Business Central Cloud or Business Central hosted on the Azure Cloud, um, do we do we own the software like we do on Business Central on prem, or are we renting the software? Right, great question. So when let's start with on premise. Okay. So you own Microsoft Dynamics Nav. You're running NAV 2015. You own the software. You can upgrade to Business Central on-premise. You continue to own the software, and oh, you continue okay. to pay 16% per year. Okay. Your, your, your enhancement annual, annual enhancement plan fee. Once you move to Business Central online, you have to move to a monthly subscription basis. So okay. you're paying per user, per named user, per month, right, to run on Business Central Online, okay. which is on Microsoft. Microsoft's doing all the back end work for you. Do we still pay enhancement fee? No. Oh, nice. No more enhancement plan fee. Wow. Nice. And because you are active on the Microsoft enhancement plan fee, you get a big discount off of those monthly user fees for wow. running Business Central Online. Very nice, very nice. So. The normal fee you get it. I don't, you know, I don't. I don't want to say exactly, what this is, but you right. get a big discount off Very of that. Nice. So, so that ultimately, what it equates to is that your annual fee kind of room is, is is consistent with what you're paying now, yeah. except now that you're Business Central Online, you don't have to pay for your server or your hosting fees. Oh wow! And here is the most important part. You're on, you're on Business Central Online, Microsoft applies monthly updates automatically into your environment. And so what does, it, does that mean that we don't have to go through upgrade processes with, 
with our partner anymore. It's just it's it's automatically done. Correct. Oh wow! Never That's again. A cost cost saving benefit right there. Right. You're 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 so t- and and now Microsoft does two updates per year. Uh, a spring release and a fall release. Mm-hmm. We call it wave one and wave two. So every six months, Microsoft is, I mean, and these are not just bug fixes. These are, really? these are you're getting jam-packed with new features and functionality, wow. integration with Office 365 and Teams, Power wow. BI, all kinds of stuff. Wow. You're getting all those benefits. And when, when that new release comes out, your environment automatically gets upgraded. For so, with, with no no fees, no consulting charges or anything. That's pretty good. Now, I, from, judging from our conversation, I got two couple more questions real quick. First is, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of old school, and I'm worried about like the the uptime, I guess, of the of the internet and and and, and whatnot. Uh, I know everybody tells me I'm crazy because the internet probably goes out less than the electricity goes out. Mm-hmm. But is that something I should be worried about? Should I really be worried about? downtime with 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 internet's going down and the in the business being down okay so good question um it depends on what specifically you're doing with business central and it depends on where you are okay okay so for example if you have real-time shop floor data collection going on uh-huh. you're manufacturing beer yep, right? beer cans yep so if on your shop floor you you have those machines are tied into business central your users are scanning in and out um and that's going to shut down your entire production facility uh-huh. right maybe you have a valid right to be concerned uh-huh. um however a lot of companies now have redundant internet connections so you have a T1 line and maybe a Comcast or a uh, Verizon or other kind of connection. And, and, and those, can be, those can be done so that if one of those goes down, the other one automatically kicks in. Nice. And nice. it's for a few hundred dollars a month. Oh, so, very nice. So you're, you pay for, you, you have a kind of a backup, if you will, or, or load balancing against mm-hmm. those two um, from an internet perspective. Now, maybe you're in the middle of nowhere. If you're in the middle of nowhere and, and you have very sketchy internet service to begin with, yeah, you know maybe maybe that's a valid reason right. for you to run an on-premise server. Now, if you're gonna if you're gonna run the on-premise version of Business Central but put it on a private cloud server, right? And not go to Business Central online but run it on an Azure private cloud server, mm-hmm. I would say you have the same problem, right? You're reliant on an based. internet connection. Gotcha, yeah. So if you're physically going to put your server on premise to make sure you have 100% uptime, maybe there's a legitimate concern there. Yeah. Nice. Now, the other question I got, I heard you talking earlier about integrations and whatnot, and you know we're running NAV 2015. So I guess two questions. One, can we upgrade to NAV 2018? If not... And we upgrade to Business Central on premise. Do all those integrations still work with the on premise, or is that really like just cloud software interacting with each other? Yep. Um, so, by inter- integrations, I assume you mean you're talking about like Office 365. Yeah. P- Outlook, Power BI. Yep. Right? Teams. I saw a couple. Teams. Couple good things. Yep. Right. So. If you're going to upgrade, and you mentioned, can I? Should I just go to NAV 2018? Right. Or right. Or what should I do? Um, there is an alternative where you what you can do is you could upgrade to Business Central version 14. Okay. Which is an uh, or 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 any version on premise, mm-hmm. um, actually 14 or above. So I would say don't go to NAV 2018. Go to Business Central. Okay. One of the versions, probably the latest version, but there's a, there's some reasons you might go to 14. Get back to that later if you want. All right. Um, but you, you should go to Business Central because once you're there, now you've got the app available to run on your iPhone or your Android device, right? Nice. And um, as long as, if you're on premise still, as long as you're running Office 365, 
and you have Azure Active Directory set up, which is just a way to link your on-premise server to Office 365, mm -hmm. now you can use those features. Okay, so we're running Microsoft Office 2019 for our Outlook and all that. So what you're saying is, if you would probably recommend us going to Microsoft 365, which is what we're thinking about doing anyway, but if we go to like Microsoft 365, then it's a lot easier and connects and integrates with Business Central a lot easier? Correct, yeah. Okay. I think, you know, if, if to boil it down, yes, your, your, your best option to get the best benefit for the least amount of hassle is to move to Business Central Online with Office 365. Okay. <clears throat> right, because you're get it's 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 all prepackaged, right? It's it's pre wrapped with a bow on top by Microsoft, <laughs> so to speak. Whereas when you're when you're running one of when running an on premise solution, those can be integrated, but there's a you know you have to you have to set up a few things, right? Or or, now, or configure a few things. Now, like licensing for Business Central is it kind of the same as Nav, where obviously we need manufacturing. But we have, you know, we have a, a, a computer out on the on the shop floor where twenty people use. Do we need to license twenty people, or can we just, you know, just add one license and and, and yep. have everybody use it or no? Yep. So good, good question. So uh, it depends on which version of Business Central you go to. Okay. Let's. How many users do you have right now? We got about forty users. Forty concurrent. Forty users. concurrent users in in Nav twenty fifteen. When you upgrade to Business Central on premise, you're gonna we we switch from a concurrent license model to an um, a named user oh. license model. So every single individual has to have their own license assigned. Is that gonna cost us more money? Is that gonna be a problem? You have more than forty people that actually well, need, like I said, we've got we've got that one that one two computer. shifts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Microsoft realizes that that could be a problem, moving to the, a named user license. So when you upgrade to Business Central from NAV, you will get three named user for every one concurrent user you have. Wow. Three so you have 40 one? right now. Yeah. You're going to have 120 named users that are able to connect to Business Central. Well, that solves all our problems then for using that shop for computer. Probably. Pretty good. And I'm assuming now... Now, is it a big difference when, when, when companies go from NAV to the, the business? I mean, it's got a completely different look. I mean, is it is the transition hard? Uh, if, if, if we're using Business Central on-premise, does it look the same? Does it look different than NAV? Yep. Um, so it, it does, it, when you first take a first glance at the new user interface, it looks completely different. Yeah. And, and it can be very, you can look at it and be very intimidated by it and say, wow, this is way different. But what you will quickly realize is that the database structure and the tables and the pages and the reports all have the same names. You have a customer card, an item card, sales orders, posted sales invoices, general journals, recurring general journals, wow. right? You quickly realize that it's, it's really the same software just with a different front end, just a different user interface. Nice. What we found is that most people within a few hours are comfortable navigating around. Oh, really? Between a run 2015 user interface yeah. to the new modern client user so interface. So the look and feel is just like, it kind of looks different is what you're saying, but the, the process, I guess, of doing something is sort of the same? Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Now, what, what about all our our customizations. Can we can we have those in, in, in Business Central online? I think a lot of these are done object based. I'm not sure because you know I've only been here for six months, but I think a lot of them are object based. Yep. Are we able to bring these to Business Central online? How, how does that kind of work? Yep, you can, yes. Um, so the development environment has changed though. So there are no objects in Business Central online. Oh. So let's say you have a custom report that you created. It's a, uh, a sales analysis report that you guys have created. What we would do is we would have to basically take that report and we would have to transition that into an extension. Okay. So it, it does not entail rewriting the whole report. So if it took you 10 hours to build that report, um, it's not 10 hours 
to move that into an extension. Okay. Right. Any fields, like let's say you've added three or four fields to the customer table or the item table, those would have to be redeveloped as table extensions in Business okay. Central. Because in the cloud and in, in Microsoft Online, right, Business Central Online, we can't change the standard Microsoft function uh, functionality. Instead, we extend it. And so we add what are called ex table extensions. Okay. For you, for the end user, once we upgrade you, it looks and feels the same. Gotcha. But under the hood, instead of having one table that has some custom fields in it, we have the standard table plus another table that stores these extended fields. And, and behind the scenes, it hooks these up. And the benefit there that's is, is that when the next release comes out, they can just quickly update the standard tables and structures without impacting your extensions. Very nice. And they can apply so, those updates automatically. So then would you say that us going from NAV 2015 to Business Central Cloud is more of a, uh, uh, a re-implementation as opposed to an upgrade? Or do you, do you still consider it an, uh, an upgrade? Well, I would say you have a choice. So if you if you if you're hap if you like your current environment, the data that you have, the setups that you have, you want to preserve your history, you want to preserve your enhancements, you can upgrade your existing nav environment to Business Central, whether it's on premise or it's on the cloud, online. If you don't if you say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm not so sure. I don't want to keep all this old data. I don't want to keep these enhancements. I don't want to have these add-ons in there because we're not using them anymore. I want to start fresh. Well, then start fresh. You still have the benefits. You're on enhancement plan, so you don't have to repurchase the software. But start fresh and just migrate over this, the data that you want your customers, your ship tos, your items, your vendors, maybe some of your other setup tables. But then start fresh with a clean implementation, add, add a few apps in that you need, and, and, and start fresh. So you have both of those choices available. Oh, it, sounds, it sounds really good. I mean, uh, I think you covered a lot of my questions. Uh, the only other real, real question I have is, is, is reporting wise, um, I see that Business Central is, is pretty robust with, with reporting, but uh, I've been taking a look at Power BI. Does Business Central integrate with Power BI or no? Yep, both on-premise and Business Central Online both, both work versions. with Power BI. Here's the difference. If you move to Business Central Online, you get a Power BI license included so that you can run Power BI within Business Central. But if you're running Business Central on premise, if you want to use the Power BI functionality, you have to have Power BI Pro licenses. Oh, so gotcha. you're paying $10 per user per month that you want to make that available to. Oh, not bad, not bad. So it's still not yeah, usually not expensive, too bad. Right. Um, but it is a difference. So two more questions then before I, before I let you go. And the first is um, we have a, a, another company that is, is, is like a sub company of ours, uh, a different division, but it kind of runs, it runs uh, basically like its own separate company. Do we have to purchase another um, Business Central for that? Or are we allowed to set up multiple companies in Business Central? Or how does that kind of work? If we, if, if we go and purchase another company and we want to bring it into in our system, can we do that with Business Central? Absolutely, yeah. Oh. Every, any, so you have uh, a business central environment, and within that one business central environment, you can run an unlimited number of companies. Wow. Each company has its own independent set of data. That's pretty good. Same with financials and everything. Everything's completely separate? Completely separate, and there's also consolidations functionality, so you could create even a consolidation company and, and, and push all those entries from your those individual companies into a consolidated company. Wow, that's pretty nice. All right, one more question then, and you've pretty much answered all my questions. Uh, so this one is, 
you know, we have we have a lot of data, a lot of documents that we've attached to things and, 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 and things like that. Are we ever going to run out of space with, with Business Central? I mean, do you even know how much space Business Central offers us that we, we, we can use? How much storage do they have? Right. So, um, again, let's talk about on-premise versus online. On-premise, you have complete control over that. Unlimited, have as much space as you want to allocate right, okay. right to your server or your drives. Right, It's a private cloud server or it's an on-premise server, no limits. When you're in Business Central online, there are limits, um, at which point, it's when you reach a certain limit, you just purchase additional space. Oh, okay, right? got you. So there's a certain amount of space that's included for every deployment. And then if you exceed that, you just pay for as you use, as needed, for that extra space per month. Okay, so if we get to a certain point, they're not going to lock down our system and say, well, Business Central is not for you anymore. you got to upgrade to nope. whatever, AX or Finance and Operations, whatever it's called. We can just purchase more uh, space as we need it and, and, and move along from there is what you're saying. Correct. Absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, well, if you had to make a recommendation for us, we like to be technologically advanced. We consider ourselves technologically savvy. We want to be, you know, with the times. You know, we, our generation that we cater to is, you know, millennials and maybe Gen Gen Z or whatnot. So we got to kind of stay up to date with things. Yep. Should we go cloud or on promise? So what I would in five tell, years, where's everybody going to be? Well, yeah, exactly. So if, it depends on what your <laughs> what your time horizon is and and what you what what your what you plan on doing. In the long run. What you should plan on doing right now is, is is start planning on how do you get to Business Central online. Okay. Because the value that you get for having no infrastructure to support Business Central, right? Meaning right. meaning you don't have to pay for a server. Yeah. No any of that stuff. IT costs, yeah. And also, probably more importantly, being on a version where it's automatically being updated every month with the latest features and functionality and releases, that's, that's where yeah. people are going to be. When you talk about gotcha. two, three, four, five years down the road, that is where you're going to get. And if you're going to take an effort to upgrade, you seriously need to consider going to, to getting cloud. to that point. Yeah, that's what we're thinking because, you know, with in, in the recent light of the, the situation everybody's in with the pandemic, you know, we've got more and more of our staff working mobily and remotely and, and, and whatnot. So we're definitely leading towards a cloud solution. And, and we think more people are going to work remote, remote as time goes on. So we'd like to give them that option to be able to work from wherever. And, uh, you know, it allows us to bring in talent from everywhere. So it, it should help us. So we're definitely thinking cloud and and in Microsoft 365, Office 365, so. Yep, yeah, uh, so the, the, yeah, so I would just tell you, so the only, so really, the, you know, the things that you should consider, don't, the reasons you would consider moving to Business Central on premise are, are, are these. One, you're, you are a, uh, you do business with the government that requires, um, you know, uh, maybe an ITAR, Compliance or something where you cannot operate mm-hmm. on a on a multi tenant cloud environment. You have real time shop floor data collection issues in an area with re- unreliable internet, and you don't want to su- you know be reliant on the internet for right. operations. And the third thing is you have a a huge and heavily customized database, where in in you know. You're, you just have concerns about moving that into an online environment. And then the, the fourth is um, you have integrations where you want back end control to the SQL database. Okay. Where you're doing things with SQL Server and you're integrating with other systems that rely on like SQL views and queries and you're updating data right um, using SQL tools or things like that maybe some complex integrations those are the reasons that you might consider staying on premise okay understandable now business central I'm assuming just like nav 
it's definitely more than capable to handle all of our manufacturing processes. Um, you know, warehousing, whatever it may be, we we have all those options with Business Central. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yep. Advanced warehouse management functionality. Um, we, you know, companies running companies that are in food and beverage, with a lot of lot tracing requirements. Um, uh, aerospace customers. Anyone who's in aerospace knows that lot and serial control and manufacturing processes is about as tight as it gets. Nice. Very nice. 